So recently I challenged myself to make a game in 4 weeks and finish something that could be released to the public to play. I've been wanting to make an FPS for years, so the project I decided to make is a fast paced endless FPS game heavily inspired by Halo. I'm going to be using Unity for this project, so I booted it up, created a new project and started by creating a super simple testing scene. The next thing I needed to do was make a player, but there's several problems with that. Firstly, I'm kinda stupid just to get that out of the way. Secondly, making a player controller requires coding, which I have no idea how to do. Thirdly, I need to choose whether to use a rigid body or a character controller apparently, and I've got no idea what either of them are. With these problems, I was pretty stuck, so there's only one thing left to do. Luckily for me, Danny has made a pretty great controller for his game, and even has a tutorial on how to make it. After copying the code, after following the tutorial and applying my newfound knowledge, I was ready to make my own player. By the way, you guys should totally go subscribe to his channel because he's a pretty cool guy and he posts some pretty cool stuff. To test out my new controller, I started the game and... Frick. Luckily, the errors were pretty easy to fix and I set it all up again and now it works perfectly. You can look around, move forward, launch yourself into the air and I think it feels really smooth to play. Even as good as it was, I did feel like it had to be improved slightly, so I went back to Danny's video, watched it through to the end this time, and finally got some decent results. The player jumps really high right now, but that's easy to adjust, so I'm going to start working on the damage system. To damage the player, I started off by making a melee enemy. Currently, it just follows the player around, and if it touches the player, the player takes damage, because that's generally how melee guys work. But that got pretty boring after a while. So next, I got to work implementing a ranged enemy. To shoot the player, it first needs to be able to see the player, so I started by giving it the ability to find a point with a line of sight to the player. Right now, I'm just testing it, so when I press K, it will teleport to a point where it can see the player. It actually works pretty nicely. After about 10 hours of coding and bug fixing, it works pretty nicely, and I'm quite happy with the end result. Now, if we have enemies in the game, it's only right to add weapons so that we can attack them back. Because without weapons, it's kind of like having a gunfight where only one person has a gun. That's it, there aren't actually any guns in the game. And there's no people in it either, so I guess it's actually nothing like. I also made a modular weapon system, which I think is pretty cool. And now to make weapons, you just set its stats such as name, damage, fire rate, max ammo, reload time, etc. And it works just like that. To start with, I decided to make a pistol and a sniper. With my weapon system, making the functionality was super easy, but without a proper model, it just looks like I'm holding a basketball or something. Not exactly the most convincing weapon. Being the lazy, being the efficient person I am, I copied some models that I had made previously into the project, and now things are looking much better. Next, I made a weapon holder, which tracks and manages the current ammo, creates weapons with the right stats at the start, and allows you to pick up and drop weapons. Oh, I hadn't actually implemented the weapon pick up and dropping yet, so it was time to do that. It really shouldn't have been too hard to make, but I wanted the system to be flexible so that I could use it for things like ammo pickups and health pickups in the future. After some research, I decided to use an abstract class for all the interactable objects. If you don't know what an abstract class is, it's a class that exists in your mind and doesn't actually exist in real life. Yeah, I've got no clue what it means either, but after a while I kinda got it working albeit with some questionable side effects. Eventually, after writing yet more code, I managed to get it working pretty well, and you can now interact with weapons on the ground. To cap off the weapon manager, I implemented weapon switching. Now you can press F to switch weapons, and E to pick up weapons on the ground. With that out of the way, I can now actually start making the guns shoot, because that's what guns are usually meant to do. I started by adding lasers, which fire using a hit scan instead of a physical bullet, which is way easier to do, and was also pretty fun. Next, I added inaccuracy to the weapons, so they aren't all as accurate as the sniper, because, you know, like, there wouldn't really be any point having a sniper if they were all that accurate. I also made a simple crosshair so you can see where you're shooting, but getting it to work with inaccuracy would require maths, and remember, math and me don't work well together, so I decided to leave it as it is. Now, I could no longer put off making projectile shooting, and it was actually way easier than I expected. A slight issue is that the shooting just gives me a bunch of errors when I try to shoot into the air, which is really annoying because I just want to shoot, so I fixed that, added a muzzle flash and some sound effects, and <laughs> after blasting off my eardrums and turning down the volume, it looks and sounds pretty good. Oh yeah, I also made the obstacles destructible, because destroying things makes me go, yes. yes. 
Having only two weapons in the game is kind of boring, so the only sensible thing to do would be to add more weapons to the game. I started off with a shotgun, but I couldn't be bothered to make a shotgun model, so I scrapped it and decided to make an assault rifle instead. And yes, they both require modelling, so don't ask me why. Now, modelling a simple weapon really shouldn't be too difficult, but the problem is that I haven't done any modelling for about half a year, and so I've completely forgotten how to make stuff. And after an hour and a half, the model was complete, and it looks like garbage. To try and cover up some of the terrible modelling, I painted it in lots of random colours and called it the party gun, so that people won't go comparing it to what an assault rifle should actually look like, and maybe I won't lose all of my credibility as a game developer. Once I'd given up on fixing the model, I imported it into Unity, and it all works in the game now. To spice things up, I added a bullet trail and imported a sky material that I found on the Unity asset store, as well as some clouds and a prototyping material. I will be changing all of this in the future of course, but for now at least it doesn't hurt my eyes to look at anymore. I also threw together a quick demo level, and that just about concluded week 1. One thing I noticed while playing was that you can't really tell when you get damaged, so I started off the second week by adding a health bar, camera shake, and a damage overlay. I also added a vignette to restrict the player's vision when they're damaged, and also just added ice touch to the game. The next thing I had to do was make a ranged AI, since I hadn't actually worked on it since making the line of sight mechanic. Since it was going to be pretty complicated, I first had to plan it, and it totally didn't take me 8 hours to do. Anyway, with that done, I could now start working on implementing my ideas in the game, and I started off simple by making the AI patrol when in an idle state. I had also attached a gun to the enemy, but it decided that it didn't want to be held and just dropped to the floor. I tried to fix it, and got a slightly better result. After writing one line of code, the enemy can now patrol and hold a pistol at the same time. After that, I implemented the line of sight that I made earlier, which was really easy since I already had the code and totally didn't take me 3 hours to do, and now the AI will move to a position where it can see you when it is in an attacking state. Right now, it calculates whether it can see you by where its feet are, but since it's a bean and beans don't actually have eyes, it's okay so just leave it be. Previously, you could also jump through platforms from the bottom, but since you can't actually go through solid walls in real life, I changed the platforms from planes to cubes, and just made the thickness really low, and that seems to have solved the problem. The next step of the plan was to make the enemy move towards the player when out of range, but it's pretty dumb right now, kinda like me, so it doesn't know when to stop and just keeps running into the player. With that fixed, I had to get the AI to shoot and reload, which I had no idea how to go about doing. However, with some very questionable and very hacky code, I got it working, and although the enemy doesn't actually look at the player yet, I was really happy with the end result. Making it look at the player wasn't too difficult, and then it was time to get working on making it go find cover when it took too much damage. This was probably the hardest part, and there were so many problems while making it. First, it kept on recalculating its destination before it reached one, so it never actually managed to find cover. After that, it decided to use the player's feet to decide whether it could be seen or not, which wasn't very accurate as you can probably guess. And finally, after all of that, it calculated its destination correctly, moved to it, I move right back into the player's vision when slowing down, creating this stupid infinite loop of finding cover and moving right back out of it. In the end, I fixed it with yet more dodgy code, and it all works pretty nicely now. To tidy it up, I made it select the shortest path to get to cover, then implemented a flea mechanic in case there isn't any cover available for it to use. Finally, it was time to put the different AI mechanics together, which proved to be far more challenging than I expected. The enemy ended up being super unpredictable, sometimes just not attacking at all, and sometimes being super aggressive and not retreating, which wasn't what I wanted. There were also some really weird behaviours where the AI would go to cover, but would have to walk past the player to get to its chosen location. Eventually, I realised that I had gotten completely sidetracked from the main idea of the game. The AI I had built was heavily inspired by Halo's grunts, and the game I'm making is a low-budget, fast-paced FPS, which will be nothing like Halo at all when it's finished. 
This AI would be far too sophisticated for it, so I had no choice but to delete it from the project. In the end, I replaced it with a very crude AI, which some people might say is a downgrade, but it really does suit the game much better. I messed around with setting its stats until it seemed about right, then added a bunch more of them to the game to test it out. I hadn't thought about the fact that more enemies would be harder to beat, so after dying a couple of times, I lowered their stats again and increased the player's health until it felt right to play. With the core mechanics out of the way, it was time to make the game look better. I started by giving the melee enemy a zombie model, and then some idle walk and chase animations, then added a temporary explosion effect for when they die, which will be replaced by ragdolls in the future. The enemy being pink isn't going to be permanent either, I just didn't know how to make a texture at that point and wanted to put it in the game first. One slight problem is that the melee enemy currently can't damage the player, so I gave it the ability to hit the player and now they're much scarier. The ranged enemy became a zombie cop, very imaginative I know, but it was a lot harder to animate than the melee zombie for some reason. The first few times I tried, the animations played but the enemy didn't move. Then I changed some settings and now it moves, but it keeps teleporting back to where it started which doesn't help at all. After that, I kept on getting some very questionable results until I realised that there was literally one setting I forgot to change, and now it all works as expected. I added a bunch of them to the scene, and when I tried playing it they were way too powerful, so I changed their stats to balance them out, and that just about wrapped up week 2. As of now, I'm halfway through week 4 of the challenge, and here's some clips from where I'm up to. If you don't want to miss it, make sure to smash subscribe now so you're notified when I next release a video. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching, slap like if you enjoyed it, slap dislike if you didn't, remember to share this with your friends and I'll see you in the next one.